Welcome to the applications of derivatives, derivatives at a rate of, as a rate of change. And I'm going to go through some sample problems here, and I want you to follow through with me, along with me. And graphing is going to help, too. So here's our first one we have here. We have s equals t cubed minus 6t squared plus 9t meters. And we're saying at time t, the position of a body move along this s axis. So when you go to graph, um, you really don't need to look at anything more than quadrant 1 and 4 because if we're talking about velocity or acceleration, quadrants 2 and 3 really um, won't help you in this case. So let's kind of go through it. I'm going to draw graphs as we go along. It says find the body's acceleration each time the velocity is 0. Okay, so first of all, um, I would do the velocity first. So I know that the velocity is the first derivative of the position. So if I do s prime of t, that is going to give me my velocity equation, v of t, and that is an easy power rule. It's 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. Okay, so now this is my velocity equation. Now they want to know the velocity is zero. So we're going to put this equal to zero. So every time the velocity is zero or when my body has basically stopped, because if your velocity is zero, your, velocity, your body has stopped, I'm going to find out basically when that happens. So I'm going to factor out a three. So I have t squared minus 4t plus three equals zero. And then three we'll never use. I'm going to factor this again. So I have t minus 3, it's a plus 3, and a t minus 1, let me erase that, a t minus 1 when I factor, and when I draw that again, so 3 will never equal 0, thanks for your help, I have t that equals 3, and t equals 1. So basically I found that the velocity is 0 when the time is 1 second, and at three seconds. But we still haven't answered the question. We just found out when the velocity is zero. Okay? Now they want to know what is the body's acceleration when it's stopped. Okay? So we're going to actually have to do the acceleration equation. So we're going to do acceleration, which is the derivative of velocity. Okay? So I'm going to take the derivative of this one right here. Okay? So when I do, it's going to be 6t minus 12. Now, all we're going to do is plug in the 1 in this spot right here and the 3 in that spot to find out what the acceleration is at that time. So if I do the acceleration of 1 at 1, it's going to be 6 times 1 minus 12, or it's negative 6. And this, I didn't really tell you what it was. Oh, yes, I did. I said meters and seconds. So this is going to be meters per second squared. Okay. And then I do the acceleration at 3. And that's going to be 6 times 3 minus 12. And that's going to be 6 meters per second squared. So right here, this is basically our answer for this question. Okay, because it said find the body's acceleration each time the velocity is zero. Now, I want to draw a little picture down here so this might help you understand what we just did. If I graph the original position function, so let's look at it. I'm using quadrant one. Sometimes we use quadrant two, but I looked at it and it doesn't really go into quadrant, excuse me, quadrant four at all. So here's your position, and this is zero. And it looks kind of like this. Here's three. Okay, so that's kind of what this looks like when I graph it. So when we just found basically one and three, we found when the velocity was zero. So this is the position, okay? And if you look at this, you see at three right here, time is three, it's not only uh, it looks like the position, it hits the x-axis too. So let's graph the velocity to see if what we just did makes sense, okay? So when I did, I graphed the first derivative because we found that, okay? Now this one does have, this is time and velocity, so this, is, it kind of looks like this. It kind of looks like this. 
So you can see for the velocity function, at 1 and 3, the velocity is 0, okay? The velocity is 0. And you can kind of see the position here as it's moving forward, okay? So this is the position, this is speed, all right? This is your velocity. And remember, when it's underneath, it looks like it could be moving backwards. So let's look at it. Now it says find the body's speed, okay? So I'm going to highlight this, the body's speed each time the acceleration is 0. Okay, so I've got to do the acceleration, put that equal to zero, find what time that is, and then see what the speed is each time. Well, we found above that a the acceleration um, function was 6t minus 12. So I'm going to put, basically put that equal to zero, and if I solve for it, it shows at time is 2 seconds is when the acceleration is zero. zero. So now they want us to find the velocity when the acceleration is zero. So I put in the velocity equation. So that's above. And that comes out to be a negative three meters per second. So this is really the answer to this one right here is it's going negative three meters per second when the time is at 2. And I actually graphed, so I'm going to graph the acceleration. So I graphed the acceleration, which is linear, okay? So this is time, and this is your acceleration. And it kind of looks like this. It's a straight line. So you can see at 2 seconds, the acceleration is 0, and they want to know what the velocity was doing at that time, okay? The next question is, when is this body moving forward? Okay, so we're going to look at our, um, basically, our velocity equation, and we want to look at it when it's moving forward. If it's, in, and if it's positive, so here our velocity is positive, here our velocity is negative, that just means it's going backwards here, and here it's, it's going forward. So it's going forward except for between times 1 and 3 seconds. So we can write it's going forward, all right, um, from, in this case, um, negative, excuse me, from 0 to 1, and it's going from a 3 to infinity, okay? So that's when it's moving forward. It's going backward 1 to 3 in seconds. So it's going backwards between those two, okay? It says, when is the body's velocity increasing? So if I'm talking about velocity increasing, you're discussing acceleration or decreasing for that matter, okay? You're talking about the acceleration. So if you were to look at it, if you were looking at the acceleration, when is it increasing? It's increasing because it's positive here and negative. It's increasing when you're going from 2 to infinity. It's decreasing when you're going from 0 to 2. Okay, because it's below the x below that um, t axis. Okay, so there's one example of how we do this. So I'm gonna see how many I can get before this video gets too long. So let's try the next problem. The area of a circle is related to the diameter by the equation below. How fast? Okay, so they're asking how fast. So that's a rate. Does the area change with respect to the diameter when the diameter is 10? Okay, so we're talking about how fast the area changes. So we're talking about a derivative. So when we do this, we're going to do the, the derivative of A with respect to D because it's a capital D in here. So basically we're doing A prime, if you will. This is the same thing as saying A prime, but I'm trying to get you used to other notation. So if I take the derivative, this is our, right here, our variable. So it's the power rule, so I'm going to say 2 times this. So 2 times pi over 4 is pi over 2 and that's just going to be d, all right? So there is our rate of change of our area with respect to the diameter. They want to know what's happening to the area, or the rate of change, when the diameter is 10 meters. So we're going to put a 10 meters in that d spot, so that the rate of change of the area with respect to the diameter is going to be 5 times pi, and it's going to be, because it's a derivative, and we're talking area, it's meters squared, per meter. Okay, so there's the answer to this question right there. Alright? Let's look at number three. 
I have this heavy ball. It's being released from this um, from t equals second. So it's being released up here somewhere and it's going to be dropping. So here it's dropping and you can see the ball moving down here as we go along. So I tried to make the picture kind of match it, right? Actually, I think I stole it from the book. So I have a heavy ball bearing and it's released at rest t equals zero seconds. So here is my position function, okay? Now they want to know how many meters does a ball fall in the first two seconds. If they ask you how many, that is position. So all I have to do basically is throw a two in there. So I can say, okay, the position at two seconds is going to be, oops, sorry, put a two right in here. Is 19.6 meters. And if you look at this right here, Notice at two seconds, it's about, this is a little less than 20. So that looks like that's how many meters it fell during the first two seconds. Now they want to know what's the velocity, speed, and acceleration when the time is two. So let's do the derivatives. So when I do this, I know that S prime of T is your velocity, because that was your position function, which is going to be 9.8 T. Okay, I just used the power rule on our original. The original was S I'll put it right here because you can't see it anymore, 4.9 t squared. So if I do 2 times that, so there is that. So the velocity at 2 is I just put a 2 in there. So I multiply that by 2. So that's going to be 19.6 meters per second. Okay? So there's the answer to that one. The next thing they said was, what is the acceleration? So I have to do a of t, which is the first derivative of the velocity, because we're talking acceleration. That's plain old 9.8, okay? So I don't have to plug anything in. I can't. That's a constant. So the acceleration at 2 is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. And so that's the answer to that one. Now I know there's another one here, but it's a longer problem, so I'm going to stop this video now so it's not too long.